I was never supposed to be attached to this place. I wasn't born there, nor did I spend any significant time there. But what exactly made this nine-year-old self believe that there was something magical over there? And why, ten years later, am I still feeling this way? I'd honestly never thought I would be here to grow up. But the feelings of nostalgia still encircle me. The exact same feelings ten years ago. Now, it's resurfaced, stronger than ever before. Something is calling me. Some far away, distant place. 7,000 miles away. What is it? foggy early morning my dad woke me up i woke up right away got ready and ran like an olympic sprinter to the door we drove for an hour to san francisco international airport and parked our car at the parking lot we went inside the enormous airport checked in and went through the security as we waited i saw a gigantic airplane we were going to ride on cathay pacific 747 I kept on waiting impatiently until the large engines of the airplane started roaring to life. Faster and faster the airplane went, until it gained full speed, and eventually it was up to the cloudy sky. Hong Kong, here we go.
2 hours 10 minutes left, 996 miles to go, 1 more hour left, 436 miles left to go, 58 minutes left, 470 miles to go, it's here, it's happening, the moment I've been waiting so long for, 2003, it's here, savor it, cherish it, 300, 200, 100, 50, 40, 30, 40. Welcome back to Hong Kong. And soon enough, the aircraft came to its full stop, and with eager anticipation, it was finally time to get the adventure started. Lightning welcoming back my return at long last. Six and a half years. I'm finally back. Back to Hong Kong. Back to Hong Kong. It's surreal coming back to a place you've only known in your childhood years. In some ways, you're coming at it with a fresh new pair of glasses, a newfound perspective. But at the same time, it all feels familiar to you in many ways. The sights, the smell, the language, the food, and the people. Despite all my years away from Hong Kong, it warmly welcomes me back, like reconnecting with a long-lost family member. 7,000 miles away, I finally made it. I'm back in Hong Kong. Please stand back from the train doors. After spending the day walking through the neighborhoods of my favorite childhood memories, we decided to go to Jim Sai Joy's Victoria Harbor to see the night view of Hong Kong. Let me tell you, that moment was beautiful.
Hong Kong has been in my childhood for as long as I could remember. So today, we're just going to look at an old atlas of mine that my parents gifted me a long, long time ago. And I remember I drew a lot of interesting stuff on there, so let's go check that out. So this is a map of Hong Kong of this very old book. Back when I was very young, I drew the skyline right here. I don't know what this was. It's weird stuff. And over here, I drew a plane. Because right over here, that's where the new airport is. But this map is so old that this airport does not exist. And this bridge right here does not exist. A very old map, but this is Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Next station, Hong Kong. Hong Kong, the perfect blend between the traditional and the new, despite operating on two seemingly different timelines. As I walk down the nostalgic streets many years later, I experience the true essence of Hong Kong. Seeing the city in the lens of its past and its present all at once. Many things have indeed changed, some things remain the same. Perhaps the beauty is seeing both at the same time in its complete fullness. That, I believe, is where the true magic of Hong Kong lies. Hong Kong is a city with many stories. Combining its former British colonial past and historical Asian roots, Hong Kong has grown into a city fusing the East and the West. A one-of-a-kind place unlike any other place in the entire world. When you have a cultural attachment to this special place, you cannot help but be proud of where you come from. We are Hong Kong. Next station, Kowloon. Connecting station for Hong Kong West Kowloon Station and the High Speed Rail. Located in the 
suburbs of Hong Kong. I look at this with a sense of nostalgia, perhaps also a hint of sadness to it, knowing that I'll never see this place the same way as it did back then. But if my childhood self were here right now, I don't think he would see it this way. Instead, he would tell me, cheer up, you're here in Hong Kong. Don't be too sentimental about it. Enjoy the present moments. What a life this is. Hong Kong, while being the urban jungle it famously boasts, offers a number of getaways into the countryside, especially north in the new territories, nestled in between mainland China and the Hong Kong metropolis. The constant rumble of pedestrians, vehicles, and construction is replaced with a quiet, distant buzzing of chirping tropical birds and cicadas. The further inland you go, the more you begin to see the beauty of Asian culture manifest itself in many different ways. Village homes, traditional Hong Kong street food, and perhaps most importantly, temples. As a city that never sleeps, temples serve not just as a place of worship, but as an escape and a quiet refuge from the hustle of society. Please stand back from the train doors. Next station, Wong Tai Sin. Temples, standing through the test of time, generation after generation. I look at these historical monuments as a reflection of sorts. As I grow older each passing day, the everyday stories that accumulate become fleeting moments, a mere trace of a memory. And soon, like these hundred-year-old temples, I would have lived a full life. On the outside, looking physically wrinkled and old, but on the inside, full of richness, beauty, and a life well lived. That's the story of every human existence and the mystic presence of temples as well.
Assam Daihong. Xianjian Daxue. Next station, University. Park Island here. Park Island, so I'm very fine. You have to go to the park. You have to go to the park. You have to go to the park. Here I was, nine years old, playing at the beach shores of Hong Kong. I look at this ten years later, reminiscing. I've never felt more detached, yet connected from my past self. On one hand, I was out there, blissfully enjoying life fully present, without an ounce of worry in my youthful spirit. On the other hand, although I've long passed my childhood days, this past self continues to live within me. While time inevitably moves forward, it doesn't have to be forgetting parts of ourselves. In fact, time makes these temporary moments ever the more important, more meaningful. And what a beautiful life this is. Following the consecutive rainy days that define much of Hong Kong's humid tropical climate, a break in the rain meant a day out to the rugged coastline of Hong Kong Island. The destination was a quaint seaside village, Stanley. I visited Stanley all the way back in 2014. And when your last memory of a place dates all the way back to childhood, you create a rather nostalgic, whimsical picture in your mind. And to finally see Stanley after nine years, this picture still exists, and I come at it with newfound appreciation. It's a beautiful experience to see a place in a dual perspective. You grow up, but at the same time, memories of the past come flooding in. There are many nicknames given to the city of Hong Kong, one of which is the Pearl of the Orient, signifying this global metropolis at the mouth of the Pearl River Delta. To me, Hong Kong has always felt like a foreign place. After all, growing up in the U.S. offers a completely different lifestyle. And when you're thrown headfirst into Hong Kong, you're suddenly surrounded by millions of people around you, speaking a language that feels just like home. I'm reminded that Hong Kong is very much a part of me. This trip isn't just a visit, it's homecoming.
as I leave Hong Kong in less than a week, I begin writing down observations from my time here. Hong Kong, as much as I derive blissful childhood memories from this place, doesn't feel like the same anymore. I've grown up, and you can't help but notice that things have changed over the years. Between 2014 and 2023, I've certainly changed, but Hong Kong as well. Is it now time to wake up and speak the truth? Is it now time to confront what is in front of me? Well, here it goes. There are some things in childhood that you simply can never experience ever again. It's this idea of blissful ignorance. One of my first ever recollections of Hong Kong was arriving at the international airport. I was probably five or so at the time. It were the highway lights that I vividly remembered getting picked up from the airport, driving in the night into the heartland of the city. Overwhelming feelings of ecstatic, pure bliss. And for a long time, that was my picture of Hong Kong. There was something so special about it. I held onto that picture. I became attached to it. Being able to visit Hong Kong again in 2023 felt like a dream come true. Once again, I could relive the exact picture I planted in my life over 10 years ago. But in some ways, from growing up, this feeling of blissful ignorance became lost. Never again can I see Hong Kong the same light as I saw it when I was 5 years old. I'm 19 now, and as you get older, you become more aware of the things around you. Now that I understand so much more about the world around me, I see more negatives of Hong Kong. When you grow up, you can't help but notice these things. Uncovering the true reality of our once blissfully ignorant perspectives of the world is inevitable. Does this put out the fire of my love for Hong Kong? No. If you listen back to this recording, you know, somewhere else, later down the line, you won't, it'll, it'll be really hard to get the Hong Kong essence through what I'm talking right now, through the voice members. Because, because you, you need all five senses to really experience the full Hong Kong experience. And I really believe that. never collided, the fading of blissful ignorance, and the emergence of Hong Kong's true reality. Soon, this childhood picture will have completely faded, and all that will be left is seeing this place eye to eye. No more twinkled eye wonder without a conscious awareness of Hong Kong's imperfections and shortcomings. What do I do now? But before I could fully come up with an answer, it was down to my last few days at Hong Kong. Lantau Island, known in Cantonese as Lan Tau, is directly translated to Broken Head because of the extensive weathering the mountaintops of Lantau Island had to endure over the centuries. In some ways, losing blissful ignorance has been a process of weathering, a battle of hardened self facing directly with reality.
上咗咁多級，我睇下點樣。百幾級啊！我知啦，人。哇！而家嚟咗大份，幾靚景。就喺度啦。中唔中意地度啊？To leave Hong Kong, this is it. Hong Kong. I'll definitely miss everything about you, but I'll 100% come back. Thank you, with all of my heart. But for now, it's farewell. All journeys. As unforgettable as many of them are, must come to an end, and this one was no exception. A whole two weeks in Hong Kong, plus one prior in Japan, finally coming to a close. It was time to return home, 7,000 miles back to the U.S. As I take one final ride to Hong Kong International Airport, I bid farewell to the familiar sights, people, and wonders. That have treated me so fondly these past 14 days. Like all my previous Hong Kong trips, the day of departure represents a sentimental one, an acceptance of sorts. That Hong Kong, despite being a place I love dearly, inevitably remains temporary. All visits to Hong Kong ultimately lead to farewell. This one was no exception. So, farewell, Hong Kong. Pearl of the Orient. Until next time.
incredibly hard watching the skyline of Hong Kong slowly but surely leave my sight. Saying goodbye was tough, but I knew I had to suck it up. This is life sometimes, and as much as I wanted to cling on, I knew I had to move forward. And only by surrendering to the present moment of life are we able to explore more possibilities and step into the unknown. Before we flew directly back to the US, we stopped by a layover in Tokyo. As we descended to Haneda, the darkening evening sky, I could make out the shape of Mount Fuji and the beautiful light skyline of the greater Tokyo Bay. As much as my heart longed to see Japan in the light, one final time, I knew it wouldn't be possible. After all, it was just a layover. It was truly the end. It was truly farewell. So, entering into the depths of the night, I closed my eyes in a fantasy-like state, wondering if this whole experience was just a beautiful dream I had. Into ever dream. Through the portal back to where I initially came from. And just like that, back in the US. I didn't know what to feel when we touched down at SFO, but all I knew in the back of my head that this was not farewell. It was just beginning. With that, this is where I end my story. Not on a sad note, but on a hopeful one. That there will be many more stories yet to tell. As I said in the beginning, I was never supposed to be attached to this place. I wasn't born there, nor did I spend any significant time there. But this time, I believe I have an answer now. It was blissful ignorance and a bit of cultural attachment. This time, it's not the childhood picture I see of Hong Kong anymore. Once blissful ignorance fades away, you can never bring it back anymore. That's called growing up. Now I'm beginning to see Hong Kong as it is, and that requires embracing its flaws and imperfections. Hong Kong is a city that's ever changing. Its future is uncertain. Some say it's dying, and I guess depending on how you see it, they're not wrong. But I have a choice to make. Do I decide to turn my back away, or do I decide to fearlessly love it? 
Well, here's my answer.